But I've heard of you talk about the Midwest movement mm -hmm. a few years ago, mm -hmm. and you're still on it. Yes. Why have you taken, um, you know, thought of doing this? Um, you know, many people still are very, I don't want to use the word myopic, about the history of Nigeria. Everybody in the United Kingdom, we mistake the United Kingdom for England. Mm -hmm. But we all know that the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is made up of three, four home countries. Yes. Nigeria, when we got independent, it was three years before independence, they were, were supposed to be made up of six regions. Yes. The six regions were the Northern region, the Middle Belt region, the Western region in Ibadan, the Midwest region in Benin, the Eastern region in Enugu, and the Core region. Mm -hmm. The Core region was to be in Calabar, and it is referred to as Calabar or Goja rivers. That is yes. the areas that is the minority speaking parts of Eastern Nigeria. But at the Constitutional Conference at Lancaster House here in, in, in the UK, just prior to independence, it was agreed that upon independence, Nigerians yes. can now call a referendum to decide the shape of the nation. So just a year and three months after independence, the first referendum was called for the creation of the Midwest. The Midwest was to be carved out of the old Western Nigeria. So on the night of August, this very month of August, is the 58th anniversary of the creation of the Midwest. The Midwest is the only area of Nigeria that was ever created constitutionally in Nigeria. The first three regions were created by fear by the British. And after that, after the, just before the Civil War in, in 1967, Gowan started the balkanization of Nigeria. So military men just started drawing lines all over the place. But the only time Nigerians sat down and wrote a constitution, our Republican constitution, where we were totally now estranged from the United Kingdom, was in 1963. And in 1963, Nigeria had four co-equal regions. Northern region in Kaduna, Western region in Ibadan, Midwest region in Benin, and the Eastern region in Enugu. That was the status quo of Nigeria when on the 15th of January 1967, 1966, the military came and took over power. Okay. So we are saying that in terms of whoever is screaming marginalization today in the Nigerian nation, yes. they should realize that the most maligned, most marginalized, most reduced, most exploited, most explored is are the people of the Midwestern region of Nigeria, those 12 minority tribes. We are actually 12 tribes of the Midwest. Akoko Edo, Esan, Esako, Olwa, Benin or Edo, Ulubu, Enoani, which everybody calls Bendel Ibo, Ika, Kukwani, Isoko, Western Ijo or Western Izon, and Ishekiri. We had, we, all of us have a commonality in the yes. sense that we all say we came from the old, so let us put that way, that is the nexus of the old Benin Empire. And that area of Nigeria is the most exploited and most exploited. The whole of the South-South that we talk about today is an anomaly. It is a creation of Dr. Alex Ekweme in trying to dispel the silly constitution that was banded together by, by, by General Abacha. So he brought out the idea of dividing Nigeria into six geopolitical zones. Those geopolitical zones are unconstitutional. They don't exist in any way in our constitution. It's just in social space. But the only constitutionally created part of Nigeria, yes. historically, is the present-day Edo and Delta states, which was then the Midwest, or Bender. Bender means Bini Delta, yes. as I came about. Okay. But you're not clamoring for... Independence. Yes. No, 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 no. But if it happens by default, so be it. So, what even actually brought us out in the particularly about two and a half years ago was when we started seeing our close neighbors when i say i'm close neighbor i mean our yoruba brothers and our uh, uh, east, so, east, uh, mm. Igbo brothers coming up with maps okay and these maps we are drawn <laughs> without consultation with okay. the people of the midwest and our first reaction was this was what they did in 1967 let me tell you what they did in 1967. when in may 1967 on the 27th of may Mr. Gowan, Lieutenant Colonel Jacob Jack Gowan, who later became Yakubu Gowan, okay. decided to create Wahala in the Eastern region because of the, of the failure of the Aburi Conference. He decided to divide the Eastern region into three states. He turned the old Eastern region into East Central State, which is now the, that East Central State now is now the five states of Ebony, Anambra, Imo, mm -hmm. uh, Enugu, and Abia. And then he created a river state in Port Harcourt, putting the Ikori speaking and the Calabari people. And then he created Southeastern state. So where is the Southeast today? Where is the Southeast geopolitical zone? 
actually is referring to a state that is not even in that place. The southeastern state was created in 1967 with headquarters in Calabar, mm -hmm. which, is the, which is now the combined Cross River and Aquaibom. So he now created, in the western region, he just created two states, Lagos and Western Nigeria. Yes. So he, that, was when, that was when the break started. And they started creating states, pia, 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 as if states were something you shuffled on a pile, a pile of cards. So, so your you know. concern is this. Yes. Paraventure. Yes. Nigeria. Yes. Since so it exist as it presently constituted. Yes. You want it's like like the Edo Delta to be carved out. Yes. So the, you don't want to fall under the We are not Biafra. The West we are not a Biafra. No. We are a unique people who from nineteen sixty seven in a universal referendum. That is why I support the Igbo the Igbo clamor clam for a referendum. A referendum is that the people vote to decide how to want to federate. Nigeria is the most badly skewed federal structure in the history of war of the world. There is no federation like Nigeria. Nigeria is a badly skewed federation, and there must be a structural dismantling of Nigeria for it to be reconstituted along non-federal paradigms. It doesn't exist now. In 1967, August 18, the military of Biafra swore across the river Niger and went across the Midwest in a 24-hour blitzkrieg and took over Benin. And General or Colonel Chukwemeka Odumegu Ojuku announced the Republic of Benin. It was, is, there was a Republic of Benin before this one you, you have now in, yes. in, in Kotnovo. Before the fall of Victor Banjo in Ore. And then the entrance of Moetla Mohammed, who also came to the same Midwest to do havoc. So okay. in Nigeria, the Nigerian Civil War was not fought anywhere. It was fought in the East and yes. in the Midwest. We don't want that. We don't want to be collateral damage or canon folder for any contending ethnic forces. We want to remain in Nigeria if Nigeria will restructure itself because this Nigeria is dead. Let's be frank. Nigeria is not working. Anybody who thinks Nigeria is working is being economical with the truth. The only thing that has to be worked out is a palpable, is a palpable acceptable paradigm that will put all the federating ethnic units in a place to negotiate their willingness to continue in the union or their unwillingness therefrom. If the, the center, mm -hmm. the federal government, mm -hmm agree mm -hmm. to have talks, yes. a roundtable discussion, yes. and decided um, that we could restructure Nigeria yes. in the palace of uh, true federalism. Yes. Everyone, you, do you think IPOB will be willing? You see, IPOB, IPOB you, see, you, don't, you don't legislate how your people want to be. So when I hear people uh, put down IPOB, because I, I laugh at them, they are a very large chunk of Eastern, ironically, I am also Igbo in my way. I'm okay. Igbo in the sense that I'm married, married to, to an, an Igbo, Igbo woman. Yes. I speak Igbo. I have business in Igbo land. But I keep telling people that maybe the paradigm of division has not been thought out end to end by those who are propagating IPOB for three major reasons. Number one, everything about politics is economics and everything about economics is yeah. politics. Yeah. You cannot, the reason Nigeria is together today as a country, because Nigeria is not a nation. A nation is a state of mind. It's as a result of the, the Igbo-ness of the Igbo man. The Igbo man is the little Aradite, like the, glue the glue that puts that Nigeria together. together. Because they are the only set of persons within that space that will leave his house in Umuno or somewhere yes. in, 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 in Aba and go to Karanamuda and build a house and build a, a, a business and invest, and invest there. Okay. So the Igbo man is the highest commercial economic propeller of the Nigerian state. Okay, I'll come back to that. We have a caller. Hello, Yinka. The other time that I listened to him, to him, he was talking about Ruga, and nowadays, Pedro, can you hear me? And you are giving us history of Nigeria. Up to now, can you now see what is going on in Nigeria about Ruga? You see, Pedro, you are a very clever man, which I love you so much. And I want you to use that energy into seeing for things that will work positively in Nigeria. Hello. You are now talking about issue now, about the iPod and some other issues that they are doing. Yes, you need to come out to tell people, including the leaders of iPod, that you know better than what they are doing. But in a very... Hello? Thing, our father, let me use the word, our father, your father. Yinka? Okay, Yinka, please, I think, when, uh, when you want to make that phone call again, you should move away from your lovely daughter. <laughs> she also wants to be part of the program. But, I uh, think uh, Yinka lost the trend of thought. Yeah. Yinka, I am proud to say that I brought the dangers of Ruga to the public domain. And I still say today 
the ruga, which in Hausa means pursue, chase, ruga means to pursue in Hausa, ruganka means pursue them. And I've made it clear that people of Edo and Delta, I always speak on behalf of the movement of which I am the President General and Convener, which is the Midwest peoples. You, the question of IPOP, I'm not in IPOP, I'm not, a, I'm not an Igbo man, but everybody has the right to clamor for whatever they want to clamor for. And I made it clear, we are interested in a united federal Nigeria. We are interested in lifting the Nigerianness above the ethnic divides because we are the glue as it is we are the heartbeat and the big heart of the nigerian nation and you cannot transverse from the north from the west to the east from the south south to the north of nigeria without passing a territory of edo and delta and i'm saying that in the marginalization history of the peoples of nigeria we are the most marginalized maybe you don't know your arithmetic and the history of the, the historiology of nigeria the northern region of which was one over four today there are 19 states the eastern region, which was one over four, today there are nine states. That is the five states of 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 core Indigo, plus the four states of of, of, of Bayasa, uh, Aqua Ibom, Cross River, and Rivers. Don't forget that the deputy president of Biafra during the time of uh, of Ojuku was actually General Philip F. Young from Ikota Abasi in uh, Aqua Ibom State. And the east and the, the west is now six states, but we are just two. But we are not fighting to be a new nation. But nothing stops us, we are better. But we are saying that if the present president and his government cannot be brave enough to face the problems of Nigeria head on and square faced yeah. and begin to restructure Nigeria, Nigeria is a unitary system of government that has federalism written only on the front page of a badly skewed constitution, which we did not write. The first page of the Nigerian constitution is a lie. And the first lie is we the people. But we the people never congregated to write that constitution. Okay. The last constitution we actually sat as we the people yes. was 1963. We, we are saying Nigeria should go back there. We have a very clear cut direction of where to go. We are saying that there must be a physical refederalization. That is in terms of revenue allocation. Very well. That let, is let, very me, let me speak with Paul. Yes. Hello, Paul. Thanks for joining us. Let's have your contribution. Do yes, Dr. Pedro, he seems to be talking about Midwest. But the fact he is ignoring the makeup, the ethnic, the ethnic backgrounds of Midway. There is Midway and Igbo. What is their fate? I think, but let me, let me ask uh, Dr. Pedro, what is his position on the Igbos in the Midwestern region? I think some of you should be my IPOP friends because all the colors seem to be IPOP, IPOP, IPOP. You should be a little more clear. There must be a, a clarity. You were listening to me, I will repeat. If you are a student of history, you will know that a man from Asaba, his name is Dennis, Chukude Osadebe was one of the four leaders that fought for the creation of the Midwest region. And he became the first and only prime, prime minister or premier or the leader of government business of the Midwest. So what does that show you? That we, whether you are talking about uh, Midwest Igbos, Bendel Igbos, Delta Igbos, a Delta Igbo, a Midwest Igbo, a Bendel Igbo did not ask for his side to be put in the eastern region. Rather, he called for a, a federating unit in 1963 referendum where 85.1% of the people voted yes. Every ethnic nationality has a right to self-determination as, as, as enshrined in the United Nations Charter. And every ethnic nationality has a right to decide where to federate. You cannot sit within the sanctuary of your, of your palo somewhere in, 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 in Umuahia and begin to legislate a map that affects the people of Ibanke, or the people of Benin, or the people of even, even of Anam. You cannot. What we are saying, we have nothing against, if you listen carefully, I said we have nothing against IPOP. We have people who drew maps in Odudua and ended at the palace of the order of Benin. We are saying that within the paradigm that seems to be growing, we love a situation where all the southern tribes and ethnic nationalities should form a, form a common bond. When you become to ignorize a struggle, when you begin to vagrantly et ethnicize a struggle, and you are creating a class, a class demography, even when your struggle is just based on social media and intellectual brigandage, what you are actually eliciting is opposition. Opposition ab initio. Who wants to live in Nigeria that is badly skewed in the favor of a minority 6% house full in Hegemony and enter another contraction yes. that is now being detected by
persons who have absolutely no historical, ethnic, linguistic affiliation to people like us. So our first reaction is resistance. And this is not 1967. Any man, whether you are I or Dudua, wherever, you should sit down and take into cognizance the feeling, the constitution yes. of other ethnic nationalities that populate the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Maybe you, whoever the last person is, you might not know that the entire landmass of eastern Nigeria, that is of where you now call today the southeast, that is from, from, from Anambra to the borders in Eboin, before you cross over to Obubra, from the north of Usuka to you get to uh, Ukwa East or Ukwa West in Abia, is 2,560 square kilometers less than the combined landmass of Edo and Delta. And in terms of the contribution to the national wealth, I told you before, I said the Igbo man is the reason Nigeria is still together. If you listen to my governor, Ifa Yukowa, he said the moment the Niger Delta decides, or the South South decides, to carry the same mantle as IPOB, Nigeria will be, will, will be done, done, done dead. To you, to you, to be an abiku. So for you to be doing your blue bra, blue bra, blue bra, do your blue bra, blue bra stuff for Onicha, not cross. If you are from the western part of Nigeria, you can do your contraptions and your abracadabra. Stop at Ofosu, not cross. We are a people who sat down, our forefathers sat down in the years past and insisted, led by Obakenzwa and our honorable Dennis Chukide Osadebe and the rest of them now and sat down and fought for the extrication of the Midwestern peoples of Nigeria from any other region. We are the first and only time Nigeria ever embarked on a constitutional delineation or creation of any federating unit. Any other one was created by military fiat, Abacha, Yaradua, all those people sat down and within the sanctuary of their lockdowns, we don't even know that they drink paraga and began to legislate away areas of Nigeria to their whim and caprice. What will happen if Nigeria fails? In case it fails, because there's nothing that says Nigeria should not fail. If you only if you fail when the people who are constituted members of that state, if you fail, Nigeria is actually the only contraction put together by the British that has survived the British till now. They put India together as, as a colonial experience. Today, yes, the right. India that they created near Queen Victoria was the Empress of India, is today Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. If you look at Western or, is it Europe? The whole of Europe. Is it Yugoslavia? Yugoslavia sat down a small place that is not bigger than half of the half of, of, of Edo and Delta put together. Today, Yugoslavia is today Slovenia, Croatia, Macedonia, is today uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina. So let's not kill ourselves. Or Serbia. Okay, Dr. Bakis. Okay. Sorry, the guys, I got to give it back to them so that we don't, don't carry it. No, 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 it's good. No, 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 no. Don't get me it's wrong. This is a fight, my No, sister. of course, because we really need to understand this thing. We are so used to being Nigerian, and, yes. and we just really hope that that will continue. Yes. Because all this agitation, I don't know where it's going to lead us. Yes. Because people, if they are not being treated well, they should speak out. Yes. Do you have a name for this region? Have you structured that a name? No, yet? our people, we are the, the name of our, of the official name of our association which is made up of all upwardly mobile car carrying members. We are not militants, professors, all, the, all members of our House of Assembly, all, all including the Deputy Senate President, is a member of the Midwest Movement. E everybody who is somebody within the Midwest space. We are registered as the Edo Delta Indigenous People's Welfare Association, a.k.a. the Midwest Movement. But we are the Bender people, so we hail ourselves all Bender, that is our core sign. Okay, so far, how are you pushing, pushing your agenda to the center? No, no, we are, the center is aware of what, it's just something seismic will happen in the next few, few months. You get it? Because Nigeria is an illegality, as presently constituted. I, say it now, I said it now. You see, we sat down, and then a man called Lord Fred, that is Sir Frederick Lugard, who later became Lord Lugard, there's nothing Lord in him. You know, the man was just a brigand who looked on the native peoples, as he called them, and, pu and put ethnic nationalities who were independent nations together for him for administration. He wrote it under his memo to, to Lord Harcourt. Lord Harcourt then was the colonial secretary or the, the secretary of the colonial office. He said for administrative convenience. Yes. So you brought people who had absolutely nothing to do with one another yes. and forced them into a contraption. And you call that contraption the nigger area. The area of the niggers. People think it's Niger area, but, yes. yeah, but let's forget about that. Now it was to last for a hundred years. That creation, it is in the archives of the British. Was of that the, the plan? To last a hundred years? It wasn't even a plan. That was what was signed by Lord Frederick Lugard. 
on in, 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 19, in 1914. A hundred years ended in 2014. And at that 2014, good luck Jonathan decided to heed good, good judgment and call for a national confab to renegotiate Nigeria. That confab was done. Report was made. Maybe he didn't have the lever to adopt and implement before he was taken out of office. And the man who took over made it clear that he wasn't interested in that, in that confab. Meanwhile, the first article in the manifesto of the APC in 19, 2015 yes. was to restructure Nigeria. But now the restructuring of Nigeria will mean the Igbo man will have more control over his resources. Okay. It means the Edo man, the Rubo man, Soko man, Izom man. It means that the Ola man, uh, uh, man. That can be achieved. Yes. In the but but they, they but don't want that to be achieved. That is the problem. Okay. The, so we, we, uh, Nigeria is not following the articles of the letter. Okay. Or of the principle of federalism. Okay. Many of you are living in the era of Facebook. But when there is nothing beautiful in war, if Nigeria sparkles and breaks violently, the first thing that we go is your social media. So you have to sit and think again, where are we going? We are the nation. And that is not, since the leaders or our misleaders have decided not to address something that is telling us in the face day. And you're, you're saying it's like the, the present government is not listening. No, they are not, they're they're not, listening. No, they are not deaf. They are already deafened. That is, they, don't use, they don't use carbide, blast their ear. They don't hear anything. Okay. Now, let Jesus Christ or Muhammad or all the who go bless their hearts, may they open, may they see what you Okay, so you're talking about restructuring Nigeria. Yeah. Let me explain something quickly. We believe that there is a spiritual thing that has come out of the Nigerian project. There's a Nigerianness, a Nigerian, whether it's gra gra, and ownership of space. But this is being demeaned because the federal system is failing all those at the local levels, at all levels. And the reason that is happening. Is simply because the things that made Namde Azikiwe, that made Ogbemudia, that made Aolowo, yes. that made these people develop their states and create things that work, do no longer exist. And what was that? It was just a revenue allocation formula. Nigerians don't even know what the revenue allocation formula was when the state was regional, when the nation was, when regional governments were there. Today you tell me from Edo or me from Delta yes. that you are giving me a 13% derivation. The government of Nigeria is doing revenue allocation. How are you allocating what you don't generate? Meanwhile, in every federal system in the world, those, if it is in America, the, the economy of California cannot be the same with the economy of Nevada, cannot be the same with the economy of a desert state like Texas, like Tennessee. That is how it's supposed to be. In those days in Nigeria, what takes place is very simple. The Nigerian government at the regional level keeps 50% of the revenue. The federal government is given yeah, they give it 20% of the revenue. Why 30% is kept in the federation account? That is what happens in America. That is what happens in Canada. That is what even happens, ironically, in the United Kingdom of Great Britain or Northern Ireland. That is not even a federation. Because you are not, there are certain things that must be done by the Irish government in Northern Ireland. There are certain things that must be done by the Scottish and then even by the Welsh Assembly. And it does not affect those who are in England. But in there are things that are federal that must be taken care of. By 10 down the street, defense, foreign affairs. Many people in, the, in England, in London, have never seen the Scottish pound. But when you go to Glasgow or Edinburgh, you will get, a, you will get paid in the Scottish pound, which is permanently tied to the, to the, to the British pound. Because, and that is inside Britain. So the Nigerian government killed via their military coups. The military boys dismantled the Nigerian Federation. So we've been limping ever since. Why is I don't have a problem with the IPOB? It's very simple. They are fighting for what they feel is the rights of their people. Mm -hmm. They want a referendum carried out, or they want a, uni a unilateral declaration of the state of the sovereign state of Biafra. We don't have a problem with that. What we say is where your rights begin, where my rights begin is where your rights stop. Don't impose your right on my right. And if there is going to be, because life is about alliance building. You cannot sit down, I repeat, uh, uh, in, in Umwaya yes. and draw maps that affect persons in my locality. Yes.